episode, we're going to continue our look into the virtual columns when using a MySQL database. And this time, we're going to look at JSON columns. In MySQL 5.7, they introduce a JSON data type, which allows you to store multiple values in a JSON hash within your database. However, one problem to this point has always been extracting the data and being able to use it within your Rails application without having to parse it every single time. So in this episode, we're going to look at using some virtual columns to be able to extract out the JSON data and then be able to reference it within the Rails application. So in this case, in their example, they create a table called GEMP, and then they create a column that's a JSON data type, and then they create the column G, which is an integer, and it's a virtual column, and it's always generated as, and then they reference the C, which is the JSON data type, and then they get the ID from there. And here you'll see that they create four new records into the GEMP table, and they're just passing in the column C. So here we have one of the records, and you'll see that it has an ID, which is one, and then a name, Fred. And then next, they do a select, and they want to get the name, where the name is from the gem table, where the column G, which is our virtual column, is greater than two. And do take note that this is a index column on our virtual column. And then it returns the records, Barney and Betty. So within our Rails application, we'll create a new scaffold called products, and then we'll create a name, properties, which is a JSON data type, and then we'll create a virtual column called color, and then another virtual column called size ID, which is a virtual column, and it's indexed. And the size ID will just be an association to the model size, which just have a couple of predefined records, small, medium, and large. So if we look at our migration, you'll see that we have our T virtual color, which is going to be our virtual attribute. And then we can add in some different parameters. So we're saying it's a type string. And then we have the as, which means that we want to inject in some kind of SQL statement here. And then stored, which means that we're going to store this calculation into that column. So for our SQL query, we know that we want to reference the properties. And then we want to get the value of the color key within this JSON string. So similar to our documentation that we saw on the MySQL side, we can reference the dollar sign dot color to get that value. And there is a real handy method in MySQL that you're able to use, and it's called JSON extract. So we can call JSON extract properties and then reference the quote, the dollar dot color, and this will pull the color key and its value and get set to this color virtual attribute. However, one issue with this is that when this is stored, there's quotes around the color. So if we had the color green, it would return the quote green. So you are able to take this a little bit further and then call JSON unquote, and then put this all in parentheses. And then this would just turn the word green. And then similar for our virtual attribute for the size ID, we can call this a type integer. We'll call JSON unquote, JSON extract properties. And then from the properties column, we'll select the size ID, and again, we'll store this as true. And for our color, we really don't need to store this as true since it's not something that we're searching on, but just something that we want to easily be able to reference from our stored attributes. So then in our products form, we want to be able to fill out our color and our size, and then these will get stored into the properties JSON data type. So within our form, we can call form.fields4 properties do builder. And the form came from the form up at the top. And then we can build out one of our inputs for the properties. And in this case, we'll do color. So I just have a wrapper element here. It's a div tag with a class field. And then this builder that we have here is going to be referencing to our fields for properties, do builder. And then we are referencing color. And then we're just giving it the label color. Then we have builder again. And then dot text field, color. And then the value is equal to the product.color. And if this is a new record, then this value would just be nil. However, if it's not a new record, and because this is not a true attribute on our model, it's a JSON attribute on the properties, then we do need to pass in the product color here. And we do this just so that when you go to edit the record, whenever you use the fields for, it'll be populated with the value that was stored on the database. And then we can also do something similar for the size ID. So we'll create another wrapper element. Then we have our builder label for the size. And this time we are creating a builder collection select. 
and then we pass in the size ID. We want to get all of the records on the size model. We want the value for our selection to be ID, and we want the display or the label to be name. And then again, we have selected, which is if we are editing this record, it's going to set it to the selected value of the product size ID. And another thing that you'll have to do is within the strong parameters, the product parameters of the products controller, we won't be able to reference our properties like this because our properties is a JSON data type. So instead we need to have our properties and then we need to pass in a array to the properties. And in this case, we're setting the color and the size ID to be allowed parameters. So if we launch our application and visit the products URL, we can click on new product. We can give it a name and then we can select a size. And then when we go to create our product, you'll see that it automatically creates our product. And then we have our properties with the color. And this is just showing the stored JSON data. And then we have our color green and our size medium. If we edit this, you see that we still have our color selected and it's still selected in our size medium. So on our show page, you'll see that we have our color and we're just calling at product.color. And for the size, we're calling the add product dot size because this is an association. So if the size doesn't exist, then it won't error out when we call the name. And just for reference, our size has many products and our product belongs to size with the optional true. Notice that we're not calling any other kind of parameters on the associations here. And it just kind of works right out of the box with the virtual columns. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.